So in this video, we are going to go through how to set up your starting tactic when starting a new save in Football Manager 2024. So welcome to this video. In this video, like I say, we're going to start with Austria Klagenfurt in the top flight of Austrian football. And we are going to look at their squad and decide and put together the best tactic to suit that team. Now, a lot of new plays, when you start, you will start by going to the tactic screen and you might select one of these or create your own and think, OK, well, I'm going to play a 4-2-3-1. I'm going to play a 4-3-3 wide, a standard 4-5-1, basically. And there you go. Then you will plug and play the players into that tactic but is that the best method or is there another way to do this so for me tactical creation will start on this screen here and i will go through the plays i have i will also look at the agreed playing time and see if we can piece together a tactic which will suit them so what i like to do is filter down position wise so let's first off let's have a look at the goalkeepers straight away we've got a bit of an issue that we have two first choice goalkeepers not an issue when creating the tactic we're not going to be starting two in goal sometimes i wish we could maybe salzburg away for example but that is something long term i need to look at addressing but defense wise then let's have a look at our defense just as a standard defense so right back do we have right backs we have three we have a 24 year old who is current three star potential three and a half a three star potential five and in 33 year old who is three star current and three potential obviously so let's start with the older one so he can play central midfield and he can play on the wing as well which isn't an option if needed um, and if we look here you can see he has good stamina so i wouldn't have an issue playing him wider even on his own as well we have a 19 year old here who has very very good physicals with 16 pace and 18 acceleration 18 agility also a thing to point out there is he also is reasonable on his left foot so quite a decent youngster there and then we also have this 24 year old italian who stamina wise etc isn't the best but he does look very decent he can play on the wing as well but I like my fullbacks and wingers to be able to get up and down, up and down. When they only have nine stamina, it's a bit concerning. But all in all, he looks a, a solid. He's a solid start in right back before you would then look to sign someone who suits your attribute desires. So, okay, happy enough with that. And you can see here, I always have on my home screen for the squad my determination work rate teamwork concentration decisions and composure because i just feel them attributes are so important it's nice to have them on the screen visible and you can see the young 19 year old actually struggles with a lot of these where the 24 and 33 year old are a little bit better lacking determination and stamina for the italian I'm disliking him more and more. So moving on to the left side now. One of the left back options is the young right back we looked at. So if we discard him, then we only have two left backs currently. We have both of them age 25. And both of them look like they have decent abilities. So let's have a look. First off is Yaritz, who I would say is definitely more of a winger. You can see here he has 11 tackling, but marking of 9, heading of 8. 5 foot 11. Let's have a look. If we go left back as a full back on support, I mean, it does have good attributes in the areas which are needed. And if you go onto the winger side of things, his passing lets him down. So maybe out of the two, he is better as a, as a left back, not a winger. But this, this is why it is important to just go through and have a look at the players. So we have a look at the left back here, the other one on option who has low dribbling now this is quite important so what i'm going to do actually is what we can do is just make sure we remember to pick him so i'm going to just stick him into the tactic we've put together at the minute just as one of the players we're going to look at so let's move on to defensive midfield and see what our options are 
So we have a central defense. So we haven't done central defense, have we? Just ignore them. Who needs central defenders? Okay, central defenders then. One of them is the young right back. So he is very versatile. Um, and then we have a central defense, central defense, and a central defender stroke defensive mid. So one of them is 33 years old. So let's go through them. So the first one is Mara, who is an Austrian central defender. He's six foot three, which I like. I do like tall central defenders. He looks decent, low aggression. I do like my central defenders have good aggression and quite low decisions at 10. For the top flight, I would like that higher. Same with agility. I'd like my defenders to be able to move. We have Vimmer, who is six foot three, good jump and reach. A little bit bad decisions by one. Aggression, I think, was up by one as well. Um, decent technicals for a central defender. If we go on just basic central defense, he is decent. Again, pleased with him. Then you have um, Gezos. Gezos, he's Greek-Albanian. And he is naturally a defensive midfielder. He's only six foot, so he is lacking compared to the other two. And... <sighs> He's okay. He has really good teamwork and work rate. I like that. Definitely, I understand why they have him as defensive mid. The issue with that then is if he's going to play defensive mid, who's our backup central defender? So straight away, this, this team is light. We've only got 18 first team players, but it's becoming very visible when you look at that. Um, defensive midfield-wise, we have this um, Gizos, or Kezos, however you say that, with the GK. So you have Markelik, let's have a look at him. He's a 21-year-old defensive mid, naturally a central midfielder, but only dribbling of eight and first touch of nine concerns me. Finishing of nine, crossing eight. He's definitely a hold in central midfield. He's better at tackling than he is at dribbling. So that is something to always look at. Um, we have one who can play defensive mid, central mid, and attacker mid, a 31-year-old German stroke Italian called Bentinelli. So he looks very good. You can see why he can play all the positions. He's good at dribbling and shooting, but he's also okay at tackling. He's as good at tackling as he is at shooting. 16 teamwork, stamina of 14. Um, so he has the ability. He's 31, so he is getting on. He's not a player we're going to build the squad around, but he's definitely decent. Again, naturally in central midfield. Then the final one is a 27-year-old Turkish stroke German. And let's have a look at him. Again, good teamwork and work rate. So it looks like our midfield is quite good for that. Again, very all-rounded. Good at tackling, but can shoot. Good at dribbling, can pass. Again, an all-round central midfielder. Can play defensive mid. Lacking in that height. I always think if I want a defensive defensive midfielder, I want someone who's six foot two, for example, and can drop in and offer support defensively. So I'm a bit concerned we can't offer that. And let's just check central midfield in general. So you can see we have two who pop up. We have the right back and the other right back. So two of our right backs have popped up in this option as well. It's nice how we have some players who are versatile. So there's only two new new players have appeared on the list here. Andy Irvin, who is on loan from West Ham, um, came through at Hearts of Mithlonian. Um, decent, he is decent. We're not paying any wages for him, which is nice. Um, good passing, he, he lacks the tackling ability, a little bit better at finishing, good dribbling. He is left-footed, which is always nice, but he is also 6 for one so he does offer a bit of height in there. The worst of the three we've checked so far in midfield in terms of teamwork and work rate. And then finally, we have an Austrian who is Kretko, who also came through in England. So Christopher, um, who came through at Bolton. So he started AKA Carnton, who is who this club was formed from, the club where I'm at now. Um, so he's come back home, basically. But then went off to Bolton, and that's why he's got some English roots in there. Um, okay, so central midfield, we have some talent, but not amazing talent. So let's go them two. Right. This could be an issue. So in terms of right midfielders, we have one, and it's the right back. Okay. So on the left side, we've got Yalt, who we looked at, who is okay, but not a world beater. 
Um, did he come to the academy? No, that's AK um, Wolfsburger. Okay. And then we've got this striker who can play on the left wing as probably an inside forward. So again, we don't have any wingers. We don't have any wingers. Okay, that's um, not what I expected. So in terms of attacking mid, yeah, we've got that correct and then we've got also a guy who's going to pop up in our striker option. So let's have a look at this. So attacking mid stroke striker is Kawena. He is German stroke Turkish. Definitely more of a striker. Um, he can dribble quite well, but and passing is 12. So he could play in the attacking mid. I'm not sure what what role, because see, it's suggesting shadow strike. I'm not sure what role I'll put him in, in there. I'd probably focus him as a striker, as probably maybe the poacher decisions maybe let him down in there. I was just thinking for the acceleration and pace and the fact he can finish. Uh, we've looked at the guy who can play on the left wing as well. And the final one, look, has Nicholas Binder, who is a 21-year-old, 6 foot 4. Wow. 6 foot 2 and 6 foot 4 for two of our strikers there. And off the ball, 18. Jump reach, 17. Finishing of 12. Heading of 12. Wheatley's only got heading of 12. 6 foot 4. 21 years old. Came through at Rapid Wien. And joined us in 2020-24. Um, you can see here, last season, his first season in the top flight. He played 10 games, scoring 9 goals. So we have somebody who is clearly a goal scorer. And he's 6 for 4. So I've gone through the squad. So let's bring out the whole squad. Yeah, as you can see, it's not the deepest squad. So we had a left back, but our left back... Couldn't really dribble. We have three strikers. One can play an attacking, attacking mid. We had some good central mids. We had one player who was natural in defensive mid. So, are we thinking maybe that? Maybe that? Maybe a 4-4-2 diamond? Maybe a 4-1? Maybe that could be the second tactic. Maybe that's the home tactic. But... Piecing together a tactic based on squad analysis is quite possibly the smartest and safest way to piece together a squad when playing football manager. But some of the things you've got to work on is, for example, your striker is a tiger man, okay? So the only option with him is tiger man on, it says support, but it also says he can play as a poacher. It's a tough one because he's actually quite quick. He's actually quite quick. I guess it comes down to the decision of what tactical setup you're going with. So when we are playing with an attacking midfielder on the home tactic, we will call this. Maybe we'll use him as a poacher. Maybe in the away tactic, when we don't have that attacking midfielder threading the passes and there's a bit more of a gap here. We could look at playing as a target man. So with the first tactic put together, I've gone with the more defensive defensive midfielder in the guy who can play in central defence as well. Um, that's mainly due to the fact that we've got an attacking midfielder and two strikers. I just want that hole and play in front of the in front of the back two, just offer a little bit of support here. Um, you need to remember the individual instructions when putting a tactic together. So for example, um. In general, I would like my left backs to just be natural, but in general, this guy couldn't dribble. So make sure you go and add instructions and dribble less and take fewer risks just to make sure you are informing him, don't do something you're not good at. You're not very good at dribbling, so please don't do it. Um, in terms of these positions here, what I would probably like to do is some sort of a Mazala, which means that they drift a little bit wider. Um, just off of that bit of width, but also it does give him a position to drop back because Sveko, as you can see here, he's finishing his eight, but he has good passing, his vision's okay. He can also tackle as well, so he can offer a little bit in the centre of field. So again, I'm going to personalise his instructions to shoot less um, and just make sure that he, 
yeah, just make sure he's offering himself in central midfield here. So I'm not going to ask him to roam from position. And I'm not going to ask him to run wide or move into channels, etc. Just dribble, sorry, just shoot less because he's not the best shooter. Apart from that, he's just going to lurk around in this area. And naturally, as an attack midfielder on support, he'll drop in a little bit. And then the fact that I have two Mazalas behind him mean that they are going to pull wide, which just gives that freedom for him in that position. Um, during pre-season, this tactic will evolve. But in this video, we're just discussing how to piece together your starting tactic. One of the options you could be looking at is making the defence midfielder a ball winner midfielder, for example, on support. And that would just mean he just comes into this area a little bit more. Which means when the Mazalas do drift into channels when we get the ball, if we lose it, it's not totally empty in that space. There is a chance that Zek, um, this um, Jekos, I'm renaming him. I'm renaming him. Wait. Cosmas. There is a chance that Cosmas will move into that gap and just offer a bit of support in centre midfield. But I've picked our starting team. It's important the mentality suits the players we have. Now, we're very narrow, but we have a hard work in centre midfield. I'm going to leave the mentality on balance, but in possession-wise... I'm going to put our width to fairly wide, and that's just to stretch them central midfielders just a little bit. Just a little bit. But what I do want to make sure I'm selecting is to focus through the middle, and I want to make sure that I'm working the ball into the box. Now, the reason behind them two settings is I just want to give us time to get players up there. We don't have wide men cutting in. I want to just make sure we have time to work the ball, and time for our attack midfielder or the Mazalas to get into a position where they can affect the final third. There's a chance this work ball into the box gets removed. There's a chance some of the two strikers are getting in behind enough. Like the Porter, for example, if he's getting in behind, I don't want his mentality to be, oh, but I've got to pass it across and work this ball a little bit more. Um, focusing through the middle, I mean, that's self-explanatory. We don't have any wide men. We don't have any wide men. We're going to focus the player through the middle. Now, in terms of passing directness, at the minute, I don't feel like we have the best football team in the division. So I'm going to just go slightly more direct, a standard tempo. Now, player for set pieces, that's an option I would go for if we've got a very tall, strong side. So one thing I do like on my home screen is I have my height. So if we select here, we've got our starting 11 selected. So we have a 6 for 4 striker. Six foot attack and mid, six foot centre mid, six foot defensive mid, six foot three, six foot three. So we have one, two, we have three players over six foot three. And we have one, two, three, four, five. We have six players over six foot. I think we have quite a tall, strong squad. So I think during pre season, I will tinker with this. I'll maybe select and just see are we winning many duels aerially and if we are maybe it is something i can use through this season to sneak points to beat the bigger teams maybe play for set pieces is an option against salzburg or maybe there's a team specifically in the division who isn't using a very tall starting squad but these are options i will consider throughout the throughout the season throughout pre-season especially now in terms of this I quite like low crosses normally. They whip them in quite low, quite, well, just along the ground, and strikers running behind took it away. Now, we have a 6 for 4 striker. So it's very difficult for me to decide which one to go with here. I think we're going to go with mixed. Leave it to the player to decide what the best cross is. So in transition... At the minute, we are playing with three players in the final third. So, can we counter-press? Yes. If we counter-press, are we going to maybe leave ourselves short here? There's nobody extra wide. If the Mazalas are up here, we screwed. It's a tough call, but I'm going to go with it just because we have this final third... And when possession has been won, do we want to counter? Definitely want to counter because I want to push up my fullbacks as well and try to get ourselves into the game. Now, one thing I will always select is distribute to central defenders, distribute centre-backs. And that is because you will find your goalkeeper 
always, no matter what, no matter if you have five tiger mans up top, your pass completion from goalkeeper will be so, so low. It's just better to pass out to the central defender and let him maybe play it in the midfield than attack. Build up that way. It's just safety, not just giving the ball back to the opposition again and again. Now, in terms of out of possession, we're playing a flat back four and a defensive mid. I would like to maybe look at a lower line. I would. I would like to look at a lower line just to stop them getting in behind. But just to confirm this, we are just going to double check the speed and acceleration of our back line. So we have pace 12, acceleration 14, agility 14. Okay. We have pace 12, pace 14, agility 10. We have 11, 13, 11. And we have 14, 14, and 13. Okay. So we're not the slowest team. We, I think we can start with standard. We can just see if they are playing balls over the top. I do find it so OP, balls over the top. And the low line can just prevent that happening. But we'll, we'll stay with standard for now. Um, I do like to trigger press. When they go over this line of engagement, that is when the trigger press kicks in. So as soon as they cross the line, let's press more often. And tackling... I have to have get stuck in. I have to have it. If we don't have get stuck in, I just find players watch. They don't even tackle. You can have stay on feet, then maybe watch it, but they just don't do anything. So get stuck in just means you are making tackles. I do struggle with a couple of yellow cards through a season, but all in all, it's not too bad. Now we do have two six foot three central defender so we could look to invite crosses and just say come come at us we are going to win these headers but for now i like to leave that same with press and trap defensive line the only time i will say drop off more is if they have a striker who has 20 acceleration and pace then just drop off don't let them get in behind that's one of the key things and it is again it's all about checking the team you're going to be playing in the data hub the next opposition and just making sure you are adapting your tactic to suit them but that was how i pieced together the initial tactical setup when i start a new save hopefully it's useful for you hopefully it can just give you a little bit of tips and advice of what i look at when i'm putting it together i've been paul osnos the northman thank you for watching and i'll see you next time